I don't give a I don't I'm not running for politics. I don't give a if I get personal opinion. All y'all can suck a fart for all I care. But what I do care about is y'all defacing my name as a person and my character and integrity. Welcome to the Dark Times channel. And so most recently, R&B singer Chloe Bailey took to her Instagram to post uh, an up and coming project that she's working on with Chris Brown. So her and Chris Brown are doing some music together. And then R&B singer Kylie Williams took to her Instagram to take a shot at Chris Brown. You all may remember her from the 3LW group back in the early 2000s. I'm getting a little tired of your broken promises, promises looking at your... And so she takes to her Instagram to go ahead and take her shots at Chris Brown. And that was a big mistake. That's a huge mistake. You can take free shots at almost everybody but Chris Brown. Chris Brown comes pretty close to Michael Jackson as far as being falsely accused of things and being accused of things that he didn't do. Or at the very least, being accused of things that can't even be confirmed or validated with any proof. I don't follow Chris Brown on Twitter, but... I did come across, you know, some of his tweets. If you just take a look at some of Chris Brown's past tweets, you can tell this is somebody who really doesn't give a damn about the powers that be. This is somebody who's just going out there doing his thing, eating off his talent and not really concerned about the industry for the most part. You know, there's definitely been times where he's had to take down some tweets and apologize for this and that. But for the most part, this is a dude that really doesn't give a damn. It seems like almost every year now, Chris Brown is being hit with a false allegation. So he's pretty low-hanging fruit for somebody like Kylie Williams to try to go after. But the only thing saving Chris Brown is his talent. He's somebody that the mainstream media can't cancel, no matter how hard they try. He's somebody that, you know, the mainstream media can't even cancel. Especially in this day and age where your social media and your Instagram and things like that play a major factor in your ability to be able to sell out concerts and be able to promote yourself. And just basically, you know, be able to provide and make a living for yourself without having to use, you know, traditional outlets like some of the artists still have to do. And so Chris Brown is definitely not the one that Kylie should have messed with. And so Kylie comes out and says, let him come out with his own record. So genius, so captivating that it makes us all forget he beats women. He can't, so he won't. So what does he do? He slowly creeps back into the mainstream by getting small nods for features on black women's merit. Black women who are more talented, more worthy, but give him the okay. I'm swatting the effing air right now, garbage. And so that's not even a genuine tweet right there. That comes across as somebody just trying to get attention, trying to stay relevant, trying to signal to the mainstream media that she's with the BS and she'll definitely take shots at people within her community. So Chris Brown being the rebel and the bandit that he is, you know, not really being beholden to any of the so-called proverbial powers, you know, Chris Brown fired back. So Chris Brown basically said the same thing that I did. You know, he's tired of the BS, you know, people taking their shots at something he did when he was 17 years old, basically. And truth be told, you know, that whole altercation between him and Rihanna, you know, that kind of came to light when Chris Brown did a documentary a few years back. And he was talking about exactly what happened. And until that point, that's not something that, you know, either of them really discussed. You know, most of us kind of assumed what happened based on some of the things that we heard, but we didn't know the full story. And so in that documentary, one of the things that Chris Brown said is that they were driving into an awards show that night. And Chris Brown got a text message on his phone and Rihanna saw it. And it was from another female that was basically congratulating Chris Brown for his award that he was up for. And I guess Rihanna didn't like the tonality or she didn't like the vibe of the text message or whatever the case may be. And she started going off on Chris Brown while he's driving down the highway and God only knows how fast they were going. So he's driving and I guess she's hauling off at him. And at one point I believe she had a hold of his nuts. And to me, that would explain the bite marks that she allegedly had on her. And I remember way back when that incident happened, when it came out that she had bite marks allegedly on her, I was thinking to myself, a man will only bite if his life is in danger. That's the very last result for another man to bite somebody outside of Mike Tyson. 
what happened here. That's the man's last result. If he feels like his life is in danger, that's kind of the last result. He'll, he'll result to biting. Outside of Mike Tyson, that is. Right after that, when I heard that, that you know, she had bite marks on her, I'm like, man, that didn't sound like somebody that was just beating on a female to be beating on her. That sounded like somebody that was in fear of his life. And then it came out, like I said, in the documentary. Basically, you know, they were going at it. You know, he was driving. At one point, she got a hold of his nuts. You know, he's got, I'm sure he's got both hands or at least one hand on the steering wheel. And so he winds up biting her. So she grabs my nuts. And when she, when she do that, I actually, I bite, her, I bite her arm, I think, as I'm driving, because I'm still trying to drive. You know, and then after that, they pulled over and, you know, whatever happened, happened. You know, but at 17 years old, if you're being attacked by anybody, I don't care who it is, female, male, if you're being attacked by anybody, I would say it's very difficult, unless you're a trained, skilled fighter at 17 years old, to be able to defend yourself without hurting the other person. And so, like I said, Chris Brown pretty much said the same thing. You know, he tweeted out, if y'all hate me for a mistake that I made when I was 17, please kiss my entire you know what. I'm not going to repeat it, but please kiss my entire you know what. I'm F in 33. I'm so tired of y'all running with this narrative. Y'all are the same ones that tune in each week to see Blueface and Chris Sean beat the F out of each other in front of the world. But that's okay. It's entertainment. All y'all can you know what. Disrespectfully. And then he ended with a picture of Kylie from the group of 3LW that says, that says, stop it. <laughs> And if y'all remember the song, y'all know exactly what Chris was referring to. You know, and then Chris Brown wasn't done. Chris Brown really went off. Like I said, Chris Brown is not the one to play with. When you're somebody that knows how to get it from the mud and you're talented and you don't have to rely on anybody to be able to generate income for you, that's somebody you definitely don't want to mess with. That's somebody you don't want to start nothing with. Because he's not like the um, cause he's not like the typical, he's not like the typical entertainers out here that you know, he's not like the typical entertainers out here that if the industry stopped pumping their music and stopped promoting them, you know, they would go broke overnight. They wouldn't know how to get it. So he kind of sets himself apart as far as that goes. And so he continued by saying, you know, where's the cancel culture for these white artists that date underage women, beat the F out of their wives, giving these B's the ABC's. They are your buddies. He said, no more fake love for me. Stay out of my way or get ran over. Simple as that. So like I said, it's on. Chris Brown's really not having it anymore. It's almost going on 20 years now, you know, and he's gotten hell over it this whole time. So he's definitely tired of the BS and it doesn't seem like he's going to be putting up with it anymore. And then he ended up posting stories about Sean Penn, Mel Gibson, Nicolas Cage, Ozzy Osbourne, Tommy Lee, Charlie Sheen, Steven Seagal, Emma Roberts, Carmen Electra, Christian Slater, Josh Brolin, Tommy Sizemore, James Kane, Vince Neil, and Mickey Rourke, you know, and all these people had the same thing in common. They're all so-called white actors slash entertainers and have had their disgraceful stories somewhat swept under the rug. You know, there may have been a blimp about it on a tabloid back in the day, but that was all it was. It was just an article or not even that, just a headline. And then they went back to singing and acting and being able to star in major films. So Chris Brown knows exactly what time it is. And he's somebody who understands the double treatment that he's been receiving over the years. So definitely seems like he's not putting up with the BS anymore and he's letting people know it. And so let me know what y'all think in the comment section about this one. And as usual, peace and chaos.